seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 40. Initial machining of the three stainless steel rings in my Myford ML7R lathe, which will eventually become three escutcheon plates to cover the gaps between the boiler bushes and the firebox cladding. And just in case you don't know what an escutcheon plate is, here's the dictionary definition. An escutcheon is a general term for a decorative plate used to conceal a functioning non-architectural item. I have the three blanks which are rough sawn and need boring to the right size down the centre. For the boring operation I'm using my Myford lathe. Why the Myford? Well it doesn't have any grooves in the chuck jaws as you can see here, they're perfectly flat, which makes it much easier to hold these stainless steel blanks accurately. Most three-jaw chuck jaws have grooves in them, which are very useful for holding certain things. But in this case, flat jaws are the order of the day. At the moment, these parts are not accurate. The diameter is accurate, but the front and back faces aren't. I need to enlarge the centre drilled hole. The first of the blanks in position was the one that I faced in the lathe on the end of the bar. Here I'm using a small boring tool which makes a terrible noise but gets a good finish so I can't quite figure that out. The holes in the centre of all three of these blanks need to be the same size and these stainless steel parts must not be a tight fit on the safety valves or the turret. Currently I'm enlarging this hole two thou at a time. Don't forget one thou on the hand wheel equals two thou removed from the work. And what I'm also doing here is, once I've bored the hole, I pull the boring tool backwards, without altering the setting. And this gives me exactly the size that I need. Here I'm trying the safety valve in position, and as you can see, it's purposely a rattle fit. It must not be tight. Don't forget, the brass expands more than the stainless steel when it gets hot. The first one was easy, I only had to machine one side, but on the others I have to machine both sides. And the only correct datum that I have to go by is the hole in the centre. This episode may be misleading, but in the next episode all will be revealed. I'm machining these parts, but I'm leaving them oversize. I will need to remove a lot more material to obtain the finished items. Here once again you've just seen me go through with the boring tool, then without altering any settings I pull it backwards out of the hole. If the boring tool wasn't so small, what I could do is this, pull the boring tool towards me across the front and face the front with the boring tool. But this is a very hard piece of stainless steel and I didn't want the boring tool to be destroyed by pulling it across the front. What I'm going to do is bore the holes in the centre of all three of these blanks and then the next part of the machining operation will take place in the Boxford lathe. Here are the three blanks, approximately the same size, sat on the bench. And when I sit the safety valves and the turret into the blanks, you now should be getting the idea of what I'm making. I will eventually turn down these three blanks to become three stepped washers. Now it's back to the Boxford lathe to reduce the thickness of these blanks. And for this I'm using the excellent lathe tool that I bought recently and made smaller so it fitted into the Boxford. This is very elementary turning, I'm not bothered about the finish, it's just rough turning. All I need to do is reduce the thickness of these blanks in the lathe. You will see now as I start to turn these parts and then turn them around in the chuck the running true. The reason that they didn't look very true in the Myford was because they were as they were cut on the bandsaw and that certainly did not cut them square. The reason for this is that I had to put some weight on the outer part of the bandsaw's blade. I was really worried that the bandsaw blade was going to rub on the stainless steel and then obviously it would not work, just become very blunt. As a general rule when you're machining stainless steel Always keep the cutting tool, whether it be a lathe tool, a twist drill or a bandsaw blade, constantly moving through the material that it's cutting. If the cutting tool rubs on the work, then the surface work hardens and becomes very difficult to cut, and with the exception of certain carbide tip tools, it will destroy cutting tools. 
Twist drills are particularly susceptible to destruction when working with stainless steel. I speak from experience as I've destroyed quite a few over the years. This carbide tip is beginning to show some signs of wear. That's because before turning these parts, this carbide tip was used to turn the cylinder cover for the traction engine. I will continue to use it for now, but when I get to the finishing cuts, I'm going to change the tip. After a while, I ended up with three rings approximately the same size. Why are they on an Allen key? Well, they are very hot indeed. And after burning my fingers twice, I thought it would be better to display them to the camera on an Allen key. As I mentioned earlier, these are very much the embryo parts of what they're going to be. I need to machine some steps in these to the same diameter as the boiler bushes. And once this is done in the next episode, they will then be turned down to be much thinner than they are currently. That is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.